Hello everyone, I am Mr. Cheebs. This is going to be a full tutorial series related to the Mantaflow integration of Blender. We're going to cover things like the basics of fluid simulation, all the different settings that Mantaflow objects can use, and ways to apply the principles that we're going to learn. I also want to do a fully detailed simulation at the end of this where I walk through how to use everything that we learn in this series. For these tutorials, I'm going to be using Blender 2.82a, as that is the version you can download from Blender's website as of when I'm recording this. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get started! Mandaflow is used for both liquid and smoke simulations. There are three object types that can be used in a Mantaflow sim, each fulfilling a different role. Domain objects, flow objects, and effector objects. The domain defines where the simulation will take place, as well as most of the settings for the simulation, such as the resolution of the fluid and the way the fluid interacts with the world. Flow objects can either act as an existing fluid volume, introduce new fluid into a scene, or take fluid out of the scene, rather like a drain. Effector objects can either collide with the fluid or act as a guide for it, changing the fluid's velocity. Over the course of this tutorial series, we will be looking at each of these objects and how they are used for both liquid and smoke simulations. The process for setting up a simulation is pretty simple. First, you create an object to emit your fluid. Then, you add in effector objects, like the walls or containers the fluid would collide with. Then you would create a domain object and change the settings for the simulation you want. Once the setup is complete, you would tell the computer to calculate the simulation so it can be played back in the viewport. This process is known as baking. You will usually have to bake a simulation multiple times, tweaking things in between bakes in order to get something that looks good. In Mantaflow, you will need to do different bake types as well. For smoke simulations, you can calculate the base smoke and then do another calculation to bake in extra detail. With liquid simulations, you first bake a particle system that shows the movement of the liquid. Then you can bake it into a mesh object that can actually be rendered. After that, you can bake it one last time to add in little particles, such as bubbles and white water foam. Let's hop into Blender and take a look at how we can apply these concepts to create a simple liquid simulation. I'm going to add in a UV sphere to be our flow object and introduce fluid into our scene. Let's move that up a ways and add in a cube below it. We will make this an effector object so the fluid will be generated by the sphere and flow around the cube. We need a domain to round this out, so let's add in another cube. As we learned before, the simulation will take place inside of the domain, so we need to scale it to fit the area that we want the simulation to take place in. You'll want to be able to see inside of the domain, so let's switch this to a wireframe. We can do that by going to the object data menu and finding wire in this display as option. Let's name these three objects so we can quickly reference them in the outliner and have a cleaner scene. Now we can enable Mandaflow simulation. The way to do this is by going to the physics tab and clicking on the fluid button. The type setting is the type of Mandaflow object that the selected mesh will act as, so we want to select the domain type for our domain cube. Let's enable fluid and select the effector type for our smaller collision cube and then enable fluid and select the flow type for our sphere. For this to work, we need to change a few simple settings. We need to switch the domain type from gas to liquid, and we need to change the flow type of our sphere to liquid as well. We also need to change the flow behavior of the sphere to inflow. We'll get to why this is important in future videos. To see this simulation, we need to bake it in the domain settings. If we scroll down to the cache dropdown, we can see the basic settings we need to do this. First, we have an export path. You can change this if you have a specific location you want your cache files to be saved. By default, it will save in the same folder as your Blender file. The cache type can be changed between modular, replay, and final. Modular allows us to bake the different fluid passes that we talked about earlier separately whereas a final cache will calculate them all at once. 
The replay type is a little bit special. It allows you to see your simulation in the viewport without baking the full thing. For now, let's just leave this type on modular. Frame start and end are the range of frames in which the fluid simulation will be calculated. Let's change this end frame to 250 to match the end frame of our animation outliner. The data file format offers different ways the cache data can be saved. Unicache is Blender's own method of saving data. Raw is an uncompressed method, so it'll take up a lot of storage space. OpenVDB files can be transferred to other 3D softwares and were developed by DreamWorks Animation, so theoretically it should be the best. In practice though, I haven't gotten a single fluid simulation to work when caching with this file type, so just leave it on Unicache for now. This advanced menu only has one option, so let's just look at it now. This toggle will export a Mantaflow script for technical and debugging purposes. You'll probably never need to use this though. Now that we know how we can save our Mantaflow information, let's bake it. We can scroll up to this first menu and click Bake Data. This will take a bit of time. Quick side note, make sure that this liquid setting is toggled on before you bake your data. Once that is done, we will have our particles playing in the viewport to visualize our simulation. Now we can open up this mesh menu, toggle on the mesh option, and bake that data as well. If your baked mesh ends up being too low, then you will need to reset the origin to the center of the object. Bring up your search menu, type in set origin, and select origin to center of mass volume. So now you know what those different objects do, the very basics of how to set up a fluid simulation, and the different settings we can use for caching our files. In the next video, we are going to start looking at individual objects and the settings that we can use for those. I want to thank you all for watching. Good luck with those simulations, and have a great day.